way in the next few moments. And Jeremy, your reflections on what we saw in the previous match? No, it's high quality. Um, unfortunate to see any of the players have a mistake in the last game like that after a few great shots. Skyler's going to have to regroup there and always got to regroup quickly, even after a win. The first track, Alex Pagelein's break. Yeah, if you look at the table, the group table, huge match here. Alex can really bring himself, uh, can surpass Oi, I believe. Yeah, he can go second. He was so tight last year at the end of the second phase. We had four players on 16 and two on 15. So that's how tight it was going into the last day. I think we're heading for something similar this time, the way it's looking at the moment. You've got Pelovanovic on 13, Oi on 12, and then four players on 11. Then after that, it's 10, 9, 8, 8. It all fizzled out a bit yesterday in terms of getting through, and it was resolved, and we effectively knew our 10 quite early on, and then it was confirmed with quite a bit of play still to come on Friday evening. The way it's looking at the moment, it's very hard to imagine anything like that happening tomorrow. Yeah, I agree, and thinking about that last match again, maybe a little bit of how Sky ended yesterday, right? Started off with a win, lost a couple crushers uh, to end day five, and I don't think it carried over. It just happened to be that way. He's just got to go regroup on the break and come in this evening and, and keep firing. Yeah, and he's got two more matches to play tonight against Alban Ocean and Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. But our focus now switches to this match, the last of the early session on day six of the Premier League. And again, just like the six players that didn't make the cut, the prize money does differ for those that, that won't move on to the final six. So still competing for a number of things. Of course, that's secondary to these players, but just a little reminder to us and the fans. Oi won when these two squared up in the first phase. Prevailed by five racks to three. It proved to be the last match oh. of his run of six wins in a row. Yeah, interesting shot here, a little preference. Does he want to add spin and come to the side rail just past the side? I kind of like just coming straight down by the nine myself. That's just how you feel, and being at the table makes a huge difference. You may have to stun this a little bit or play from underneath, play the nine in the side. It's not hard, but. Players would always rather be above this shooting it in the corner rather than from underneath in the side. He's not really stunning it much, though, it doesn't appear like. So maybe just kind of rolling it. Oh, is this going to get above it? Oof. That was close. And the perfect start Alex for Pagalion. Yeah, as we've said, Oi can move on to 13 wins if he wins this match. But Pelovanovic's racks difference is so strong that Oi would still be in second place, even if that does happen. And that's going to be one of the big questions tonight, JJ. How will Pelovanovic respond to earlier today? Lost both of his matches right at the start of the session. Could have won them both. They were both 5-4. We know he had the little spat with the referee during the match against SVB. So this is really going to tell us a lot about him tonight when he comes out to play the first two matches of the evening session on table two, whether or not he's been able to put that all behind him and come out fighting. Yeah, I think he'll start the match fine. We'll see how the you know, match kind of lays out Back and two. pans out, and that might show a little break. bit more of his frustrations. But I mean, we've got to reconsider or consider that he's a 21-year-old 
young man, even though he's a professional athlete still you got to give him a little break and i think that's the question mark right there i mean that break there look at the movement on the balls and i think you do have to consider that maybe sky woodward had a little was a little valid in his point uh of bringing up something about the break shot it's about as soft a break as we've seen all day and he's got perfect here on the two to open up the mess by the spot. You know, in, in always defense a little bit anyways. With the spin and all that, I think at times if you miss the one a little bit, it could look a little lighter, but definitely just a little bit of arm motion there on that break off. I have to bear in mind some of the players, they just don't have the ability to rifle through the balls. We saw the two ladies that played in this tournament. You know, if you're judging them by the same standards, well, they're nowhere near the power of so many of the other players. Some of their breaks look pretty soft as well. Yeah, they look soft, maybe the result, but if you watch what they were trying to do, though, the intent was there. So and it's more about intent than yeah, outcome, absolutely, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, you, I mean, we all could whiff the ball a little bit, right? I mean. Well, how many times I'm trying to hit a 250-yard drive, and it just mm. doesn't go very far. Almost made the nine earlier in the rack, but it stayed over the pocket, and that enabled Roy to find that combination with which he levels at one all. Yeah, just talking about Pelovanovic, those back-to-back -back matches at the start of the late session will be against Alban Ocean and Conrad Yushishin. And he'll still have another one to play after that, back on the main table against Jason Shaw. So it's the sort of thing where it could all slip away from him quite quickly. He could go on a real losing streak if he doesn't put the defeats earlier to the back of his mind. I think it's uh, going to be significant for Pelovanovic's chances in this tournament when his next win comes. Three. And I wonder on the break if there's any discussion I, I with the referee since it has come up a few one times. Uh, the warning earlier by Marcel, you know, the discussion in the last match between Schuyler and the ref and Schuyler and Oi. I think he can get at the two, and if even if he can't, he'll try to make some type of jump shot. I think he can get at it, though. of that the position he played maybe he had to subtly swerve around the edge of the nine I think he got himself in a decent position here but what he's thinking about now is really the six ball I think how do I get on the four to get on the five properly to get back to the six extension, extension cold A streaky tournament for Pagaline. He was one of a few players who won all of their first four matches, but then things went off the boil a bit until round about the middle of Thursday when he started winning again, and once he did that, he won four in a row. And his worst result of the first phase right at the end of it, losing 5-0 to Alban Ocean, the only match in which he didn't register a rack. In fact, it was the only one in which he didn't win at least three racks. Yeah, he's going to come a couple of rails, I think, just for the bank on the six. So speed control, pretty important. Oh, this shot doesn't really lay that well on the slick table. I'm surprised he tried to play this. I guess the six in the side 
is a shootable ball. Maybe something we overlooked. Thought he had to get for the six in the corner, but this overhead tells that this six in the middle definitely plays. I think what we saw last year, the first time we played this format, the standard was obviously high from the start, but it got stronger and stronger as the tournament went on and players got to a point they were so played in and in such a groove that the level of play we were seeing was absolutely phenomenal. And just a few signs today, I think, that that's starting to happen again. It's been a very high quality start to this match. A match in which Alex Pagalayan leads by two racks Alex to one. Pagalayan wins the rack. We know that Sanyam Pelovanovic will lead the Premier League into the evening session on day six. But who's going to be in second place behind him? It'll be the winner of this match. At the moment, it's Alex Pagalayan 2-1 two two in front. But Oi has the break in the fourth. Seem to get into this one a bit more. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we can be fooled a little bit. You know, maybe just sometimes the ball's open a lot better for one reason or another. But I, I could see a difference for sure. Uh, a little light with the cue ball. And not saying it's terrible, but when you have a safety like that, and the one thing I see Alvin do a lot, is you don't want to go for the devastating safety unless it lays there. But there, I think he could have spun him on the back of the four, really kind of eliminating the jump shot, and he may not have snookered him at all. Extension, Extension cool. Is he putting the two underneath the seven, maybe? Is he attacking? Let's see where the cue ball's at. And I, that's where I kind of felt it may end up if he attacked. And I, that's why I kind of was curious that he went offensive, just because position I thought was a little tough. Especially the speed he played it. Not sure what Oi's so alarmed about. Doesn't have a shot offensively, at least not a great one, but has a good look at the two. You can shave the two, leave it on the rail, bring the cue ball a couple rails behind the nine, using the five as well. Yeah, that's what I... Kind of felt like he would play. And is Did he overrun it here? Maybe giving up a sliver of the two ball. And if he has, he may have given up a bank cross side. This is the type you may jump the ball. Even with the full cue, looks like he's swerving it, trying to bank the ball in. In the last match earlier today, we were talking about always run to the US Open semi finals about 18 months ago in Atlantic City. 
easy to forget now because it's so long ago, but he has been a world semi-finalist as well, all the way back in 2012. Beat some young chap from the north of England called Boys in the quarterfinals, and then lost to the eventual champion, Darren Appleton, in the semis. And he's had a really good world championship record the last few years. Got to the last 16 three times in a row prior to his last 32 defeat this year. One of the few players to have been involved in this tournament in all three stagings now. He's shown in the first year when it was known as the Championship League and was played under a different format. Or a really memorable Group 5 final. Perhaps the best match of the whole tournament against Roberto Gomez. And so nearly made it through to the semi-finals because he was fifth on the final day and only lost out to Alban Ocean on Rack's countback. Ocean went on to win the title. Wasn't so good last year when it became this format and was renamed the Premier League. Came in fourth bottom. Making a nice out here to try and tie our score. It's been a day of close finishes on the main table. All the signs at the moment are that we're going to have another one. It was one all. Now it's two all. I was asking Alex the other day, Alex Laley, how he feels he would have fared in a format like this. And he says he wouldn't have liked it at all because it would prompt him to do too much overthinking, which he reckons has been a big factor for him through his career. But what about you, JJ? When you were in your prime, would you have liked to have played in a tournament of this format? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the new format of, of the rules and the tighter pockets, period. I love that. But, yeah, I liked it. I was kind of a consistent kind of player. Um, didn't fall too, too far below my game, you know, wasn't the highlight reel all the time, uh, to be fair, but um, yeah, I would have loved, loved to get to play, you know, 15, 14, 15 matches to start and Scores are tight. try and see how you fare. And you can get into yourself a lot here. You know, you can get fooled into these races to five and think of pressure and maybe nerves to start, whatever you want to call it. But if you think about just getting into what you're doing, I think there's a lot of benefit to these players. I wonder what Alex meant by overthinking it. And I guess maybe he was thinking away from the table, maybe thinking, oh, I got to do this to win this. This guy's got to win by so many games and so on for me to advance. I, I, that's the only thing I could just really kind of put my finger on when he makes a statement like that. Well, the way he put it, I may not be getting it word for word here, was my best strength as a player is that I think a lot. And my biggest weakness as a player is that I think a lot. So we know from listening to him and talking to him that he is someone who clearly gives a great deal of thought to the game, but it's just interesting getting his perspective on how he feels he would have fared in this unique format, and likewise to hear your thoughts on it. Yeah, and I guess think rethinking it, maybe he's thinking of so many matches that he would expend too much energy, you know, between the years during during each match. And But to me, I mean... I don't know. I'm used to playing a couple races to nine or eleven at the pro tournaments a day, something Extension like that. Coach. There's some that you just play one match, and there's some you play even more than two. So alternate break races to five, even at five matches in a day, doesn't seem too punishing. And I was someone that used my brain a lot as well, but it, it kind of got me in a little bit of a trance doing so, meaning I just kind of forgot the situation and just got very involved from one shot to the next. Oh, beautiful hit. And he put the speed on it, trying to get some separation. The thing that, an, another thing that maybe goes with what Alex was saying that 
I've kind of learned since not playing as much, but helping players. And when I did play, I think it helped me some as well as understanding the flow of the stroke is much more perfect, more important than perfect position all the time. And the game's a lot about recovery anyways. Um, so I really like a player that that really stays uh, stays very good on the physical side of things. Of course, you don't want to be lazy playing position and getting through the rack, but but someone that's willing to to overcome a little bit of imperfection, I think, is very important in this game and in life generally. Yeah, there you go, Michael. Big shot here at two apiece. <coughs> Interested to see how he plays this with the six being a little covered up. He could kind of force it a little bit, it looks like. Doubtful he draws straight out. Probably top with a little left side. Coming two rails inside the eight and the side rail. So now he's going to have to come with a big shot here. If he can go with a high ball, it's not too bad. But if he has to draw it, the eight's a really big ball. Coming across. I don't know if he got there. Maybe just... That's the other thing that I, I noticed about Oi, which I saw a little different than a year or two ago, is not only playing faster, but a little more body movement um, than I'm used to seeing from him. And not all the time, of course, but. Thin one here, Michael. Kind of right on the fence. Can he slow roll it and hold, or does he have to go all the way back up table? and maybe back into position where he's at now. And a theme of missed six balls towards the latter part of this session. We saw a couple from Woodward in his back-to-back -back matches. One could be very significant in the context of this match. Oh, we had the chance to lead for the first time. And I believe would have been breaking in, in the game next number rack. six. Yeah. yeah. Well, this was the first of Pagalion's three breaking racks in this match that he didn't run out from us, but he's won it anyway. He's one ahead for the third time at 3 2. Alex Pagalai wins the rack. Just looking at Naoki Oi and his record in the very biggest events last year, we talked about how he keeps getting to the latter stages of the World Championship. He was last 16 in that in 2022, last 16 of the UK Open as well. Had a decent run at the US Open, and as I said, last 32 of the World Championship this year. Now, I never believe in that thing that if you keep knocking on the door it will open eventually but if he keeps putting himself in the later rounds of tournaments the percentage chance that it's all going to fall for him one week and he will win one of them it's just got to be getting higher and higher if he keeps doing that yeah absolutely whether you know he gets to that stage whether it be final 32 16 whatever number you want to pick out that you know he just plays exceptional from there and just kind of takes over the tournament right or maybe gets a little fortune from his opponent at times to get past some matches. One way or another, if, if you keep doing it, you kind of feel like it's going to happen. Yeah, he doesn't tend to go down to surprise defeats 
it tends to be only the very best players that beat him. We were talking about it yesterday. Even Ocean has that tendency to just suddenly get a really surprising defeat. We saw, obviously, the 9-0 against Robbie Capito at the UK Open in London. But Oi doesn't seem to do that. If you expect him to win against a lesser-known opponent, it nearly always seems to happen. Yeah, he doesn't re really vary his game much, right? Going for a big shot here. A lot of movement again, though, on the body. And not saying he was always a statue, right, when he played before, but I see a bit more often now than I ever saw from him. Well, prior it's, years. well, it's about three or four times at least we've seen it across these two matches that he's played back to back. To afford to keep doing that. Uh, Alex can put himself in a great position. I think the two may Thank squeeze you. by him, but it's so tight. He's so far away from it, and he has to put a draw stroke to get back for the three. There's a few shots here. The cross corner bank with the big pocket with the eight there. It's a possibility. It looks like he's going to attack going by the six. Oh, really nice. I think probably the most pure stroke I've seen Alex put on a ball the entire week. Really effortless drawback on the cue ball. time since we had to raise the question of whether Alex Pagalion was going to win one of the game's standout titles. He won the two biggest in back-to-back -back years in the mid-2000s, World Champion 2004, US Open 2005, so he's in that very exclusive club of players who've won both of them. Okay. You were effectively one match away from being in that club, Jeremy. Yeah. 1999, uh, actually finished second in the U.S. Open that year as well. Kind of crazy. You went on to win that four years later. You think I've been talking a lot over the last few months about the fact that this year's U.S. Open will be the 20th anniversary of you winning it. Just see how much I'm going to be talking about it when we actually get to Atlantic City in September. Yeah, 20 years, this seems to be a special anniversary for things. And never know. I bring the cues to good old A.C., Everything match room's done. I mean, the U.S. Open's something special. I want to play at all these events, to be to be honest, but that's just a pool player in me. Nick Varner, I saw him at the Derby City Classic. We did a, a little commentary together, which is always special. Well, he was your opponent in that World Final in 99. And my roommate, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so, but... Uh, he played very late, you know, into almost 60 years old, I think. And he, he asked me why I'm not playing at such a young age, which 51 doesn't feel that bad, but it was something to think about hearing it from the Kentucky Colonel. Well, there wasn't much missed early on in the match, but in the last two racks, Noyuki Oi has missed a six, he's missed a two, and it's cost him both of them. And that's why Alex Pagalain will be breaking on the hill in just a moment. A couple of expensive misses for Noyuki Oi in the last couple of racks. Alex Pagalain has ended up winning them both. Rack seven. So 4-2 in front. Break. He needs on to win hill. one of the three four, remaining six. racks to climb to second in the table. Cue ball did survive in this lower left-hand corner. It's a very difficult play on the two, but does have a look.
He's got a few options here with the eight and the five there. He could come off the left side of the two, kind of going up table between the six and nine, trying to get a snooker that way without worrying about maybe giving up a shot. Now he's elevating the cue, so that means he's not edging off the left side. I, I, I don't think the bank sits that great, even though the seven is a little bit of a helper if you're off coming across with the blue two. Extension cool. Okay, he's leveled the cue out now. So maybe, like I said, maybe playing the two across, maybe edging it. That looked like the shot to me. Again, with so much cover there with the five and the eight, just in case you didn't get the full snooker, I think that's the right play. Which it's very few and far between that Alex Pagline doesn't pick out one of the higher percentage shots. Been around so long at the highest level. Extension. Extension. Experience and his knowledge always come out. Yeah, now I think the jump cue is correct. Where is he going to play the two for some type of safety? Maybe a long rail bank? Maybe he flukes it in the side off to seven? Good effort. I mean, he's going to make Alex come with one. And this type of shot was the difference in Alex's prime versus what we've seen the last few years. Now he's had a heck of a 2023, but these types he used to come with at a very, very high rate. And that's not going to sit well with Alex. <coughs> Especially because he kind of shot it in a cinch kind of manner, not putting a ton of speed on the cue ball. Suddenly the whole complexion of the match changes because he has a chance here to get back to only one behind and then breaking in the next rack. Already had one Hill Hill finish this afternoon, beating Skylar Woodward. And there we got a very good look at it, didn't we? Seemed to be a lot of body movement. Yeah, and he's always had a little bit of a quick tempo. So when your technique is on the quicker side of things, does promote a little bit more body movement, especially if the nerves are going. And, and I think also the way you walk around the table has a huge part to do with it. When you're speedy around the table, I think it picks up the tempo anyways. Used to talk to Billy Thorpe about that a lot. Billy, the American Moscone Cup player who played in this tournament when it was the Championship League here, uh, year before last. He's still hanging on here. He trails now 4-3. As I said, he'll have the break in the next rack. He's one of those players we associate a lot with the World Cup of Pool because he's pretty much a fixture in the Japan team, Noyuki Oi. He's played in it eight times. He's been in the semi-finals on a couple of occasions and was within a rack of getting there again the year before last. And the World Cup of Pool, which will be coming up again in the summer, it's a fantastic showcase for just how international this sport is. The fact you can put up 32 teams and they're all pretty strong, 
You saw Slovakia, who were just about the weakest team in the event on paper, got to the semi-finals. It really underlines how global the sport has become. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that'll continue to grow as, as much as, as Matchroom wants it to grow. And surprising to me, though, that Japan, you know, back when I played, they had several really good players. And yeah. prior to me coming in, they had several great players. And I'm surprised they hadn't really produced more of those, uh, you know, with always such a... Four uh, a popular three. figure in the game. All right. Oh, awful kiss from the seven there, and he's going to get pinned, I th think. Uh, he may have an edge. Three's near the side, so he may oh. let her fly a little bit here. And it, I think if he makes it, he may go between the 6-9. If he misses it, maybe a little nine ball action. Well, he went around it on the slick table, kind of hugged off of that hit. He's begging for this to slow down a bit. I don't think he can afford to take this in the side. Maybe. I think he's got to take it in the corner and dig on the cue ball a bit. No matter what lead you t you Extension take cool. in these matches, seems like one mistake can draw you level quickly. Well, particularly with the alternate break, <coughs> depending on how the the breaking falls, if you're in a position where your mistake hands the rack away, and then the other guy has the break in the next rack, the whole momentum, the whole context and narrative, can change in a heartbeat. that a little thick to the pocket. I think he was trying to come for the side, so he's going to have to make a bit more of a shot in the corner. And it's the one thing I've, I've seen with Oi this week on the lighter strokes. It's like the timing's been off a little bit. The speed control's been a little suspect at times. Big shot here. See you later. I'll strike. I think that's what we'll be saying to Naoki Oi in a moment because Ford this looks hand. to be over now. Please start the clock. Started the match with three breaking runs in a row. It looks as though they're going to be the only three we see. Yeah, and on that replay, you could tell he caught the six a little on the long rail side of the pocket. He wanted to hit it more towards the center, which would have taken us on a different route of the cue ball. Unfortunate to bow out like that in this match. But Extension court. He's in a good position, and he is going to win one out of his first two. Well, from Pagaline's point of view, it's going to add up to a good session. He's had three matches in us. Lost to Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, but either side of that, Wins over Alban Ocean by five racks to two. And now against Noyuki Oi. With a scoreline of 5-3. All means that Alex Pagalion climbs to second in the table.